Hey, super excited. Another fun episode of Business Growth Time. With me, as always, is Janet E. Johnson, where today the E stands for enticing. Super enticed by this whole conversation that we're going to break out. We've got a special guest. We've got a buddy of mine from the D, or Detroit, as people are calling it now. The D went away a couple of years ago, but don't call it D-Town. That's lame. Um, Robert Collins, ma'am. Robert... <sighs> I've known you online for years, man. I've been watching you progress through the barbershop into the unique brand, U-N-E-E-K, and I want to talk about that a little <laughs> bit. Um, and now yeah. I'm watching you do branding and speaking, and I see you in Miami, and then I see you in Vegas, and you're hosting some cool events. I know you had a, a really cool early release Black Panther party recently. I don't normally date this yeah. show, but that's a, I'm going to the movie tomorrow, so I want to talk about it. I saw it. Really point. good movie. Yeah. I wanna, yeah we got to talk about that. Um, but I want to... <laughs> want to jump off because you're one of those dudes that I love to see that is out there hustling and grinding and making stuff happen, but you're doing it in a way that is a beacon for other people in the community to see what you're doing. So you're giving them a, a, a hand up instead of a handout. You're helping people kind of come along for the ride. So, so much cool stuff to talk about. I don't know where you want to start, but I'll let you pick a jump off point and say hi to our friends, Ernie. Ernie is the name of our audience because you got to have a name for your audience. Well, first of all, hello. Um, thank you for having me. Um, obviously, it's been a long time since I think the first time we connected. Um, it's probably been almost 10 years, nine years since the first time we connected online. It's been a while. Um, you know, the thing that that I think piqued my interest about you was the fact that initially I saw myself in you in terms of um, you just trying to be a bridge and um, doing public speaking and, you know, trying to help people build businesses. And I knew in my mind, that's where I was going. And uh, I tried early on to kind of identify those type of people. And so thank you for uh, being receptive and actually, um, you know, creating conversation and, and being open to uh, networking and things like that. So. Thank you for that. I couldn't help it if I wanted to, but thank you. I appreciate it and I accept, man. I uh, always happy to help good folks, man. And you are up there. Absolutely. On that. So, so yeah, my 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 story kind of starts uh, in two thousand in two thousand four. I um I was laid off from a job, and uh, actually it was like into two thousand three, early two thousand four. I was laid off from a job, and um, I thought it would be a job I would work at forever. I didn't think it would ever come to an end. And so, you know, I started, I bought a brand new house, brand new car, um, thought I was starting my life. And then about maybe a year and a half, two years into that job, I was laid off. And so uh, at that point, it kind of created a fork in the road, you know, obviously a tremendous adversity in that scenario. And just, you know, my thought process was, do I start carving my own path or do I, make a move that could potentially put me in the same spot again. And, um, you know, that really lit the fire to really just start creating, networking, building. And the thing that I could do pretty much all my life since maybe eight or nine because of my dad and some of our relatives was cut hair. And so that's kind of how I started. Um, I went into a barber shop. I started barber school. And it just so happened that maybe – six months after starting um, to cut hair inside that barbershop, the, the current owner decided that she was ready to get out of the, um, out of the business. And so she put the barbershop up for sale. And so I feel like that was like the spark that initiated everything. And from that point on, I just kind of been a serial entrepreneur. So you bought the shop that you were working in for six months. I mean, I don't know yep. what kind of dough barbers make, but that seems pretty <laughs> impressive to me. Well, man. yeah, let me let me put, let me add some context to that. So, the job I was working at, um, they gave me a six month severance pay. They gave me a, um, I had a four hundred one k that I was paying into, and so, you know, it was kind of like a leap of faith. I took everything that I had saved in that um, two years the money that they gave me, I borrowed some money from um, some family and friends. And then I went into, I bought into the barbershop. So I went into partnership with her initially. And then we set up um, a year, a plan for 12 months for me to eventually um, own the barbershop outright. I 
I love that, cool. man. That's mm-hmm. very, very cool. What do you think of that, Janet E. Johnson? Made it work. Made it work, you know? Made it work, yeah. And you know what's so funny is that that two years was probably um, what I feel like the blueprint for every single thing that I do because through that two years, I learned basically that as an entrepreneur, nothing's easy. Everything's a roller coaster ride. One day you feel like you're on top of the world. The next day I feel like the world's falling on you. And that kind of um, rotation never, it never really stops. No, it doesn't. You know, so. I was yeah, watching so, Janet. You know, she was nodding like this. I thought her neck was gonna hurt for a minute. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep, yep. So you know, that's, I think my experience in that, you know, I, I I'm still own the barbershop to this day. I do have a few partners now, but um, I hold on to the barbershop because I feel like it's always the foundation. It always um, brings me back to how I started, who I am, and it's always, I think, a relatable piece for. Um, my conversation with up and coming business owners who think that it'll happen for them overnight and there won't be any type of, uh, you know, struggle and adversity and, you know, all the different, you know, micro failures that happen through the process of building anything that, you know, will eventually be great. It's super easy. It does. It's like what, two or three days and you're, and you're all set, right? You don't have to spend a lot of time to build anything. Go go retire in Jamaica. Yeah. That's it. That's it. So <laughs> you move from the barbershop into, in, and not even move from, but in addition to the barbershop, you decided to create a fashion line called Unique. And I mentioned that earlier, U-N-E-E-K. So obviously a unique spelling, but where did the genesis for that come from? So uh, the name of the barbershop was Unique Barbershop. And I didn't create that name. That name was already established. The previous owner wanted to use um, the name unique, but she just wanted to spell it different so that people would, you know, get curious about what it was. And so I thought the name sounded like a really cool clothing line at the time. Now, this is 2007, 2006, and people wasn't, people wasn't launching personal brands and um, clothing lines online like we see them pop up every day now. There wasn't Instagram and Facebook and, well, Facebook was there, but it wasn't Instagram and all these other platforms where you could easily combine commerce and actually sell. And so um, in my mind, though, I figured if no one's doing it, it was the perfect opportunity for me to um, at least try it, number one. And then number two, we had some people that had a little experience in the in the industry and that I felt like I can get some some good quality uh advice and instruction from and so we just you know we kind of again took another leap of faith i felt like if i had successfully started the barbershop with no experience like how much harder could launching the clothing line be essentially and um yeah i thought it was really cool that google allowed you to search for anything that you wanted to search for and that's when google was just becoming you know extremely popular so we at a very like early stage and digital really started kind of tapping into the power of it and, and really leveraging um, the network and the capabilities that um, was presented at that time. And Janet, I know you were doing a lot of Google stuff back in that 2007, okay. 2009 time frame. How, uh, tell, give us a, an idea of what it would have been like to try and start a clothing line that no one had ever heard of and move that thing forward. You know, it probably would have been, like you Robert maybe a little easier then because you there's so many I mean that was before do you remember when everybody in the I think it was about two three four years ago everybody and their brother was selling t-shirts on Facebook and you know the the (laughs) deep ring you know where they so so it became a lot more competitive I'm sure for you but you also it's a little bit different because you have your own brand in your own line but in a way I think maybe now could be easier because like you said with the Instagram and with that it might might make a difference for people to reach an audience and really share their story so I'm sure that's what led you into you doing what you do now too the the agency absolutely yep absolutely 
it's, it's, um, on it's somebody funny, else's like, on your own dime, right? You learn, you learn trying to build your business, so you know what worked and what didn't work. Yep. Then it's all it really was about. Like, cool story is um, around 2008 uh, when we had we hadn't started officially selling any clothes yet. We were still kind of in our learning process, and I was on a flight from LA to Florida. And then from Florida, I was going home. But on a, on a leg from L.A. to Florida, I had a conversation with a guy who um, he had been a business owner for like 15, 16 years. He took over a, a family business and he gave me some advice that I'll never forget. He was like, in 10, 15 years, the social media will control everything. So I don't care what you're doing. I don't know much about fashion, but invest as much time and energy as you can into just learning how to operate every new platform that um, becomes popular. And like, for some reason, I just really like took a hold of what he was saying and I got off that plane and I just, I really like dove into understanding how to work Facebook, understanding how to work. Twitter was like really new at the time. And so I jumped into Twitter and uh, I made, so many connections. I created organic pages back then when it was easy to create organic growth um, on Facebook and establish networks in eight, nine different cities very easily. And then travel to those cities, show the clothes, did fashion shows. Um, so we took a very grassroots approach to um, to building the brand and just you know understood back then what it meant to build really which is why i'm so big on that word build everything is just a constant building process and nothing happens overnight and so if you really want it bad enough you know you got to be willing to put in like that type of time and energy um every single day to make it successful good points great points we're actually doing right now uh with a small private group an instagram challenge and it's like, um, we, I actually shared Gary V's, which is, you know, we were talking about Gary V. It was some of his advice with it. And it's about, I mean, he says to respond to people 90 comments a yeah. day. The and dollar 80, post, the dollar 80 yes, yes, and yeah. I think it freaked people out. I mean, you know what I mean? Because it's a lot of time yeah. and energy. It freaks me out. I mean, I don't even spend that amount of time on Instagram. <laughs> But, it, yep. you know, what it is, four times a day posting, I'm happy if I do one a day, you know? So right. it is something but right. what you just said to feed off that. It's time, energy. They, people think, oh, I can throw up a Facebook ad and have all these leads come in and I'm, it's over with, you know? Yeah, it doesn't work like that. <laughs> no. Challenges, yeah. though, a lot, of people, a lot of people talk about how much time it takes. But honestly, I've followed Gary V. I've I've got a lot of comments and conversations going on social platforms. If it's taking you longer than 15 seconds to reply to somebody's post, you're doing it wrong, right? And yeah. if you stay on top of it, or if you batch process it, either way, you yep. can get through it a lot quicker. I'm, I'm not saying it doesn't take time. It obviously takes time. If you had 90 comments and there's 15 seconds for each one, you're still spending 20 some minutes, but it's not right. like, oh my God, I got to take three minutes. days to do this. <laughs> right. 20 minutes. I mean, you know what, at the end of the day, like anything that you want, to be successful is going to take a commitment and work, you know, and like, that's always the conversation. It's like everybody in any form of marketing, any form of branding. I mean, branding is about repetitive action of the same thing and the same message really just over and over and over again, you know? And so if you want that success, then you're, you have to be willing to do the work. And then with Gary Vee's philosophy, I mean, it seems like a lot, but really 30 minutes, to an hour I mean is that really to respond to as many people as you possibly can like in the big scheme of things it's really not that much work mm -mm. no it really isn't <clears throat> but it's weird just... being on social though <laughs> you know because everybody's still kind of transitioning to that um mindset so I think just being in your phone non-stop for that long feels weird especially for people who don't operate their business through their through their phone or understand how social media really works. I was listening to a podcast this morning, and uh, my partner over here was evidently excited about it. Um, 
he was, and it was Gary Vee was being interviewed by a guy named Nathan Chan on the Founder Podcast. F O U N D R. Highly recommend this. You've been listening to yep. it. It's good stuff, man. Yep. And they do a great job. Um, but Gary was talking, and he said, "You know, you got to dominate each one of those channels, right? It's not, it's yeah. not pick one and be great at one. Oh. It's pick all and be great at all. Now, you don't have to do that in one day." obviously, right. you gotta, but you got to build to it, to use your word. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think, I mean, I try to advise people, especially if it's a, a, something that you're transitioning to in terms of you haven't been active on social, to think that you're going to all of a sudden jump on Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, YouTube, um, Twitter, you're going to just all of a sudden be active every day on these platforms is just very unrealistic and it won't happen. So I try to advise people to pick, <laughs> yeah, it, yeah it's, just, it's just unrealistic. So pick, you know, at least two platforms and then create a cadence for those platforms that works for you, you know, and then as you, once you get comfortable, um, build a system or a weekly theme that you roll out each week. And then for each platform, you apply the messaging necessary to make it um, communicate well with that particular platform. And it just makes like, it makes your weekly time and scheduling so much um, more organized and being able to put your, uh, collect your thoughts and, and deliver them properly. We did a show and the first year we were recording and it was, you can only pick two platforms. Which two do you pick? So I'm going to ask you that question right now. Cause you just said two is the magic number. Facebook and Instagram, no question. T today, no, like right I now, agree. that's what I personally would pick. Completely agree. But you're doing consumer stuff, right? So if you were doing business to business, would your answer be the same? No, it would be LinkedIn and Facebook. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But Facebook for sure. Like, face, like you have to be on Facebook, mm -hmm. I believe, because um, that's where the most human connections are being made. And the opportunity for um, quality transactions and return business comes through Facebook. And then I think everything else has to be uh, secondary after that. But, you know, that's my personal opinion. Sure Instagram, you know, Instagram's owned by Facebook. Business. Yeah, so I mean, you kind of go, well, they're kind of one in the same in a way because they're all, you know, it's the same ownership, the same ads go to both places. So it's kind of a interesting thing. I yes. always you know, it's funny because uh, I work with a lot of jewelers and I always say Pinterest, but Pinterest truly is not a social media site. It's a search engine in a way. So I don't really count that necessarily as um, social media. But yeah, I agree completely with what you said. I feel the same way about YouTube. I feel like YouTube is more of a search engine nowadays yes. than it is a um, social media platform, but people still connect socially. So it falls under that umbrella. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Exactly. That makes sense. That makes sense. So interesting. Let's talk a little bit about build. You've got programs where you're actually teaching young entrepreneurs how to come in and build their own business and their own brand. Let's talk about the genesis of that, where that came from and how it's going and how people can connect with it. Yeah, absolutely. So um, with the, with the unique brand kind of, you know, becoming a little successful and us really feeling like we caught some traction, we would always get inquiries and people trying to understand, you know, exactly how we did it. And since I would say 2013, um, we decided to really uh, dive into that aspect of helping people. And so it really started more or less as just a, a simple consulting service that we would provide for people trying to understand how to get started. Um, suppliers, price points, um, things like that, different events around the country that they should attend. And then that evolved into more of uh, like cl uh, companies outside of fashion and outside of clothes. And so around 2015, I started getting serious. Like, you know what? I, I really feel more passion about helping people launch their brands than I do about um, the actual clothing line in a way. And so, um, we launched Robert Courtney and Associates, which is a branding agency based out of downtown Detroit. And uh, essentially, we put a lot of energy into helping personal, helping individuals build personal brands. 
And then also we help a lot of um, small businesses and um, medium-sized businesses launch and, and brand through social media. Um, and doing that, I would get a lot of inquiries from people who were kind of on the fence as to whether they were ready to actually launch their brand or um, if they didn't feel like it was time yet. A lot of people who are still working nine to five jobs who are thinking about launching brands but wasn't sure yet. And they just wanted some insight and advice. And so, you know, it's, I enjoy meeting people throughout the week. Like I try to do 15 to 20 um, in-face meetups per week to just network. And I just feel like that's kind of a part of my system. Um, the thing that, that keeps me energetic, but it's hard to do more than that. And a lot of, you know, you have to obviously meet with, you want to meet with um, people that are going to lead to future potential situations. You know, you don't want to spend a ton of time doing things that aren't going to manifest into things, but I still want to help people, you know? So um, we decided to start what we call branding for beginners. And the genesis behind that was just simply how about we just put everybody instead of meeting one-on-one, let's give everybody a time to where they can come and hear the exact same information. And for the people that feel like they want to move forward, we can set up um, meetings and consultations. And for the people that feel like they're not quite ready, then, you know, we don't have to spend that time or they can just contact us when they do feel ready. And so that was kind of the start of it. And initially it was very casual, but the turnout was so great that it was something that we just couldn't do one time. And so now we do them once a month, or I'm sorry, once every other month. The next one is March 6th, which is this Tuesday in Romulus, um, Michigan at the Romulus Athletic Center. And um, I've been doing them there simply because that's close to my house, number one. (laughs) But uh, number two, I just wanted to develop, like, I like everything that I do, I like it to be consistent. I like people to not really have to think about it too much. Once they know the date, they know it's going to be at the same time, at the same place. And um, we're on number eight now. So we've done eight branding for beginners. And we've saw, we've seen probably 500 people come through those branding for beginners. And the feedback is always just amazing. And the energy is always amazing. So that's fantastic. I, is there, was there one or is there one in Chicago? Did I, I feel like that was coming up. Yeah. Yep. So we, we, started getting requests from out of state like people who wasn't physically in Michigan um, would ask is there a way we can come to their town and do the same thing because they couldn't get to Michigan and so I was like of course (laughs) we'll come and do the same presentation so we went to Las Vegas we went to Chicago um, we've done it in Illinois uh, I'm sorry Illinois to Chicago and um, we did it in one other place Uh, Illinois Vegas, and I can't think of the other place we did it, but we've done it in three other cities outside of uh, Michigan. Nice, man. That's very, very cool. Yeah. So let's, uh, let's fast forward, man. Let's say, you know, it's 2018 right now. You're a, you're a reasonably young fella. Let's give you 35 more years of work. Work, fun, mm-hmm. enjoyment, helping other people. Because I, I get the feeling you're like me. My wife's like, so when are you going to retire? I'm like, um, when I die? death is a good way to retire. I don't, I like what I do, right? I'm not trying to stop Mm -hmm. doing this. So I get the sense Mm -hmm. that you're kind of similar. So maybe at that point I do what I want to do when I want to do it with who I want to do it. And that's what retirement is to me. And I I, I get the sense, right? So let's say it's 35 years from now and, and you're slowing down a little bit, but you're looking back at the life. What's that, what's that legacy piece that you want to have left? What do you want to be known for as a as a body of work over your entire career um you know i want people to just remember me as just a good human being who like took every opportunity to help as many people as he possibly could with no expectation in return um you know at the end of the day like everything i do is really for you know my family my son my daughter and so I never, in my personal um, upbringing, I didn't have the information to be able to do certain things. It wasn't that I didn't want to or I didn't aspire to do it. I just didn't know, you know. And now, you know, with the emergence of the Internet and the mobile and social, I feel like 
there's really no excuses to give, um, you know, to be able to leave that framework for my son and my daughter, you know? And so now it's like build, build, build so that now they have options, they have the information. And if, you know, he decides to go do something different, that's totally up to him, but it wouldn't be because he didn't know or he didn't understand. And, um, I think that's really what it's about, just helping them to become a good person, hoping people remember me as a good person, and then building a, a, a company and a, um, systems that will last way longer than me, you know, that people will be able to use and implement and, uh, you know, hopefully can become successful for me. That's great, man. I love that. Mm-hmm. So, and are you doing something outside? I mean, I know you mentioned for your son and your daughter, but what about for the, for the community as a, as a whole? Like, I, well, I yeah, that, and that's doing what, some outreach there. That's what, I mean, that's what I mean in terms of, uh, in terms of the company, like, you know, hopefully the company will, will live on and, and it'll provide the systems that, of um, future entrepreneurs, future, um, young people, Detroit especially would have access to the information and the systems to be able to, um, you know, to build their businesses or, or at least understand what's involved in, in building businesses and, and legacies for themselves. I think that's what's up. So you're basically saying you're kind of like a superhero, right? You are helping out some of them young people <laughs> figure out what's up. So I told you, right. I'm going to see black Panther tomorrow and I'm super, super stoked about it. Um, but I got to ask, man, as a, as a black man, what does it mean to have someone as a superhero kind of taking over the Marvel universe? That's got to be just, I don't even know. <laughs> yeah. You know what? It's, I mean, I think it's a, it's a super cool thing, obviously, but that's one thing like growing up, my dad was like my superhero, obviously. And so he would, he would talk about Black Panther. He would talk about Green Lantern. He would talk about some of these comic book characters that like really the, I think the majority of the world never knew about or the mainstream world, I guess, didn't really um, care about to some degree. And to see it actually manifest now, you know, 25, 30 years later is just, I think, kind of, I guess it's a, testament to where we move and like people want to look at all the negativity and all the you know obviously all the bad things that happen but you know there is some progress being made and to know that you know this black um african-american superhero is, is being celebrated on a on a stage like it's happening right now i think is a is a very cool thing and if somebody can't say that's progress then you know that's just you seeing the glass half empty <laughs> That's for sure. Well, and I know, I know you're a man of positivity. I remember seeing a post uh, someone said about, oh, it's so nice to see something positive. And you're like, swing through my page anytime. That's all you're ever going to see, right? And I mean, you, that's all you ever see. You, you know have. what? You got, a choice. you got a choice. You know, you can, you can look at the world from a positive perspective or you can look at it from a negative perspective. And what good is looking at it from a negative perspective going to do for you? You know, so. That makes sense. That makes sense. All right, man, we got to work toward wrapping up. What, uh, you know, I want to ask where people can find you, obviously, but is there anything that we didn't talk about today that you want to make sure people know about you before you tell them where they can get to you? Yeah, for sure. A couple of things. One, you mentioned build. I do a build blog. Um, It's basically a little deeper look into like the things that we do on a daily basis with helping people, talking to aspiring entrepreneurs, talking to established entrepreneurs, uh, people who build their brand successfully. And we do all that through a YouTube channel. So if um, you would or everybody watching would, go check out the YouTube. It's, um, it's under Robert Courtney and um, it's called Build. That's one thing that I'm just, I'm trying to grow. I'm trying to prove the process works again. Uh, it's about two and a half months since I started it. And uh, we're almost at 100 subscribers, you know, so the goal is to really keep building that because I think in that you really can pick it apart and, um, you know, find things that will help you, things that other people do that will help you and being able to um, 
uh, include some of those strategies into your day-to-day activities. Outside of that, you can find me on all the social platforms. Um, the big ones for me is Facebook and Instagram. I'm there probably the most. Robert Courtney Collins. Um, everything is under Robert Courtney. So if you type in Robert Courtney on basically everything, you can find me. And if you're interested in checking out the clothing line, that's Unique Collection, U-N-E-E-K Collection. And um, that's going extremely well. We have a showroom in L.A. Um, we've had several celebrities um, embrace our brand lately. And so it's really cool watching, you know, a 10-year project kind of like, you know, become successful overnight. <laughs> and so um, awesome. that's really cool. That's, a, that's about how long overnight takes. It's about 10 years, I think. <laughs> yep, exactly. <laughs> yep. Oh, very, awesome. Being very suspicious with that. <laughs> yeah, no, that's great. That's great. Um, I always like to give one action step or one tip at the end, just something, maybe you could give something that you teach in your branding for beginners, something that they, they could take action on right away if they're maybe new in the business or even if they've been doing it a while, what would you, what's a piece of advice? Um, my piece of advice would be to understand that social media is about, in my opinion, two things. It's about attention and it's about building community and building community is building community is a day by day process. It's a grind, but nothing works without a community. And so if you're not sure about what you want to do, or you're not sure about um, the direction or the niche that you want to dive in, dump all your energy into building your community. Cause once you have a community, you have the attention and then you can direct that to whatever you, um, you decide to do. Perfect. Awesome. All right. Well, uh, let's finish up with, so your website, give your website again too. Yep. It's, uh, Robert Courtney and associates dot com for my branding services and social media management and then unique or I'm sorry, where unique W E A R U N E E K dot com for all things happening with the uh with the clothing line and the lifestyle company. Great. Awesome. All right, do you want me to finish it up, Terry? Yes, please. All righty. Uh, you can find all the past episodes at businessgrowthtime.com backslash uh, podcast, backslash blog, either one of those. And then also be sure to join our group and you too, Robert, on Facebook. And that you could just go to, actually, we have a direct link, businessgrowthtime.xyz. And that's where you can find us. So thank you so oh, much good. for your time, Robert. Lots of good points. No, thank you for having me. Oh, hey, you know what? I'm sorry. One more thing. You got a podcast, dude. Where can they find that? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I do have a podcast. Um, you can find that at in Detroit, the letter N, N-D-E-T-R-O-I-T, in Detroit podcast um, on Facebook and in Detroit podcast on Instagram. And then um, all the episodes, we're on episode 22, I believe, 21 or 22. And uh, you can find that on SoundCloud as well. Excellent. Excellent. All right. Sorry about that. I wanted to make sure we got that out. No. Uh, Thank you. Thank you so much for coming on. It was great to listen to you. Great to learn from you. And I'm so happy for all the cool things that you're doing. And I'll be sure I'm seeing you soon for sure. Absolutely. Thank you again, guys. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye. Talk to you too. Bye.